The planning stage was an interesting time. <laughs> In fact, to be honest, it was uh, fairly hectic and bloody awful towards the end. Um, but anyway, uh, just a few words about that. Um, started off after I ordered the boat, kind of a hurry up and wait and see kind of approach. And uh, as things got closer and closer, we realized there were a number of things we had to do. First of all, we had to figure out what was going to be on the boat when we received it in terms of uh, safety equipment and equipment uh, for cooking, linens, etc. We had many conversations with our broker, but really didn't get good answers or not answers that we felt um, were uh, reliable. So we had a number of issues that we had to uh, sort through. Um, not only equipment, we had to think about electricity. The boat was being built to US standards, 110 volts. Of course, the power in Europe is uh, 220, 240. Uh, so we had to address that, um, how we were going to uh, manage electricity on the boat during the delivery. Uh, we also had to think about uh, cooking and gas. Uh, propane gas is not readily available in Europe. So um, we uh, knew that we were going to have to use camping gas until we got uh, over to the Virgin Isles. So again, logistics associated with that, what would the boat be provided with, what fittings and things did we need to take. We had to try to sort through all those and be ready for those. And we weren't sure exactly what we were going to be able to get locally, particularly adapters for EU to, uh, to US standards. Um, we felt that would be something that would be really hard to find uh, in France. We decided the solution to, to this was to ship a pallet of um, equipment over from the US, uh, which is actually what we did. Logistics with that were uh, considerable, and again that was a, another bloody nightmare. Um, we uh, <laughs> we uh, found a shipping company eventually that would ship a single pallet. Uh, they made all kinds of promises to us and then really didn't deliver on those. Uh, but anyway, the pallet went about three months ahead of time, was delayed a couple of times with storms in the Atlantic, and uh, eventually when it did get to France, uh, clearing customs, etc., was uh, a major problem that uh, in the end we had to make a trip to La Havre to physically release the pallet from customs before it could be delivered to us in La Rochelle. Uh, just to add to the excitement, uh, I officially retired before we uh, set off uh, on the trip and Geosyntec were nice enough to throw me a wonderful little party in Atlanta which was great to catch up with everybody before we left. Neil to Geosyntec in 1995, so that was about 23 years ago. And the genesis of that recruitment was, um, at the time, we were still a relatively young firm trying to make our way in the competitive marketplace. <clears throat> and the big, really established company in Atlanta was Law Engineering. It was a ven the venerable old firm. And um, we had one or two uh, law employees that had joined us at the time. And I remember going down one day sitting down in um, the office of Kirk Kessler, if you only remember Kirk. And I said, Kirk, just tell me, who is the best engineer at law, bar none? Not number two or number three, just the best engineer in your opinion. He said, yeah, it's this British guy, Neil Davis. <laughs> you know, uh, Kirk was right. You know, you're not the best finite element guy in the world. <laughs> you're not the best theoretician in the world. But in terms of being um, a creative, intuitive, and thoughtful engineer, you're the best person I've ever worked with. And it's been a great pleasure. Uh, having you in the firm these past 23 years is, as a colleague and as a friend has been a, a real high point for me. So thank you. And um, I mentioned that, hey, we're, I'm going to retirement party. And they said, well, who's retiring? And I said, Neil Davies. And oh, oh, he was. He keyboard guy, right? And I said, yeah. And they, both my sons started laughing. And I said, what are you guys laughing about? And they said, well, Dad, I don't think we ever told you, but it, when they were little, they, they had dug into some of my old albums and, and, and apparently pulled out a couple of my old Genesis albums. And they said, we thought that you worked with Phil Collins. <laughs> <laughs> so rumor has it, this guy Davies is leaving camp now. Join the Navy. <laughs>
I'm a vessel to sail the ocean. You still don't know where he gets these crazy notions. <laughs> in my offer letter, there was a clause that Neil Davies was going to stay in Boca Raton and mentor me for six months. <laughs> and when I'd go into the firm on day two, he patted me on the back and said, you've got this. <laughs> That's Neil. <laughs> How many people are here because you helped recruit them in and help them grow within the firm? So Neil, you leave quite a legacy at the firm, and it's been great. Thank you, Jim. Then we made a trip to uh, Mexico. The purpose of that trip was to help our friends Larry and Tracy bring their boat Tracy back from uh, from Mexico. They'd been to uh, Guatemala and the Rio Dulce, and uh, we met up with them in Mexico and helped crew back across the uh, the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, actual left Tracy behind our house, uh, rafted up with Midnight Sun 2 or Hunter 42 uh, before we set out for France. Very dark, actually. Then just to crown things off, um, before we left for France a few weeks before, Hurricane Michael hit. And uh, well, that was some excitement we really didn't need, but um, it really didn't cause us too much problems at our home. But um, we have a rental house in Cape Sandblast, and uh, that area was hit pretty hard. Hurricane Michael uh, came ashore in Mexico Beach, which is about seven or eight miles from Cape San Blas. We were very fortunate that we didn't sustain major damage to our property, but still we had to get over there, put tops on the roof, um, clear out the flooded entranceway, remove sheetrock, um, all the kind of stuff that you need to think about just before you're about to set up to Europe and head out on a trip for six months. Um, but anyway, we got through it and uh, we were ready to go. One last thing, route planning. Um, gave a considerable thought to route planning, uh, spent a lot of time studying the charts, studying the weather patterns, looking where the trade winds were going to be most favourable uh, during our trip uh, in order to come across a route. That took a lot of time, a lot of reading, a lot of research on ports and where we could go, where it might be difficult to enter, all those kinds of things. Uh, but it worked out in the end. Well this is the North Atlantic Ocean passage chart which I spent uh, numerous hours uh, looking over during our planning stage. Um, just to recap quickly, our plan was to pick up the boat in La Rochelle, France, come down the coast of Portugal, and down to uh, Cape Verde, and then across the Atlantic until we got to the Leeward Islands, and um, make our way from there. So what is there to look at? There's a lot of wide open ocean. Well, when you look at the chart really closely, there's a lot of great information about different routes and trade winds. And uh, you may be able to see some of the purple lines on there, which are kind of recommended routes to take. And if we take a look on the back of the chart, there's information by month on statistical information about winds and wind direction. So for instance, here's November, here's December, and if you study these charts long enough you can figure out where the probability of wind is, how strong it's likely to be, and from what direction it's likely to be. 
So obviously that's a great deal of help in planning the route. Reed's Nautical Almanac was also a great resource with lots of information about ports of entry, um, tides, shipping, you name it, there's a lot of information in there. Big book, lots of reading, but um, very condensed in terms of um, port information, uh, but very, very detailed at the same time. And of course there was lots of time on the computer looking at different routes, different ports, where we could go, distances, how far we could make in a day, how many days it would take, etc. And eventually I built up a spreadsheet to um, make our best guess at what our route would be and what our timing would be. And uh, obviously we deviated from this, but it was a planning tool that we needed to, uh, to get us started and get us uh, uh, some idea of where we were going to be and where we were going to head for uh, on any given day or any given leg.